If you've watched any of these videos of mine, <laughs> then you know I'm a huge fan and advocate for neglected game series of all kinds, but uh, mostly from Nintendo. Oh, I feel you, brother. My favorite Nintendo IP is pretty much dead, you feel? Oh yeah, Snobbert? Like, uh, which ones? Yeah, stuff like Donkey Kong and Mario Kart, you know? I mean, come on, Nintendo gives them mobile games and merchandise, theme park attractions and such, but no brand new games in like six or seven years. The best they can do is deluxe ports. <laughs> I mean, come on, really? It's not that I'm a hipster or trying to be contrarian or anything. It's just dumb luck, or arguably bad luck that my taste in games just happen to align perfectly to where my favorite series is oft go neglected by the wider gaming market. During the Wii U era, I defected to just being a Smash Bros fan, because it was the only place where my favorite IPs from Nintendo were still being appreciated. Plus, come on, who doesn't love Smash? It's pure distilled fun. With the Switch, however, things really began looking up. Mario was back to being an exploration and collection-based 3D platformer, Splatoon was officially becoming an iterative series, but by and large, the most exciting new game being introduced alongside the Switch for me was ARMS. An arena fighter with comic book inspired art, a varied cast of playable characters with unique identities, a percussion heavy soundtrack, passive storytelling, a multitude of customization options, and a solid variety of online and offline modes? It's like Nintendo made this game just for me to make up for abandoning F-Zero and Custom Robo. I mean, I still miss F-Zero and Custom Robo a lot, but at least there's a super polished AAA Nintendo game satisfying my niche tastes again. Sadly, things aren't looking too hopeful for ARMS these days. What, with all substantial updates having ended years ago, the graphic novels cancellation, and mainstream Nintendo fans' insatiable hunger for a new Mario Kart growing more infernal every minute they go without one. It seems unlikely to me that this new Nintendo IP I love so dearly will be getting a sequel anytime soon, if ever. Due to general indifference from gaming fandom at large mixed with the game's lack of support after the first year, Many people, including ARMS' own fans, consider the game DEAD. While I'm definitely bummed about major updates ending so soon, the graphic novel's cancellation, and people picking on the game for no good reason, I don't necessarily think that ARMS is a DEAD, or even neglected franchise. At least not yet. Hopefully not ever. I don't really like to use the term DEAD franchise, especially in an industry where retro revivals are such a constant thing. I prefer to use the term neglected series but dead probably gets more clicks, so whatever. Call it clickbait over a technicality if you must, but from here on out, I'm just gonna use the term neglected in place of dead. Cool? Cool. So when do I consider a series neglected? Well, basically, when it meets the following criteria. Firstly, if 10 years or more go by without a new game or the announcement of a new game. Secondly, if the IP's creator and or rights holders express disinterest in returning to the series. And lastly, if the IP's license, trademark, or rights holders go defunct. I've often heard people say Donkey Kong Country, Metroid, Pikmin, and even Mario Kart are quote-unquote neglected series, due to them going a long time or long stretches of time without new entries. To that sentiment, I almost cringe. Donkey Kong and Mario Kart in particular are Nintendo's gosh darn bread and butter. Just because they go six or seven years without brand new games doesn't mean that they're not still some of Nintendo's most precious, beloved, and dare I go so far as to say milked franchises. DK has had its fair share of experimental phases between good old-fashioned platformers, but that only goes to show how dedicated Nintendo is to keeping the IP relevant, even when they don't feel like iterating on it. But speaking of iterating... We've been getting consistently released Mario Kart games and mindshare products alike for the last 29 years. I made a whole video dedicated to divulging on my gripes with the Mario Kart mob some odd months ago, so I won't go over it all again here. Suffice it to say, Mario Kart is the furthest Nintendo IP from being neglected, and for a fan of literally any other Nintendo racing game ever, that sentiment is laughable. With Pikmin and Metroid, it's a little different. I just recently got into Pikmin last year, and I am totally in love with it. I completely understand the fanbase's plight in having to go so many years without new entries. That being said, my fellow Pikmineers, have patience. Watching Scruffy's videos on Pikmin 3's assets and music, and reading up on the game's development, it seems clear to me that a lot of time goes into polishing the ever-loving gosh into Pikmin projects. And yeah, maybe if the series were more popular, it wouldn't spend so much time on the back burner, but Miyamoto and internal Nintendo staff alike are very clearly passionate about the series, so I can't imagine that it's going to go completely defunct anytime soon. Pikmin games may take a long time to come out, but so far they have all been worth the wait. We don't count Hey Pikmin. As for Metroid, uh, here we go. The series struggles a lot of the time to make sales. 
Many people chalk it up to being at the wrong place at the wrong time, and to a degree, that is a fair assessment. But I think on the whole, Nintendo teams and the game industry at large love and appreciate the Metroid series very, very much. Samus Aran is an icon not just for gaming, but for all of pop culture. Not to mention, the series has never gone more than eight years without a new product. The longest gap being between Super and Prime 1, mind you. In its 35-year history, Metroid has never qualified as a neglected series, at least not according to the simple yet scrutinous criteria I've outlined in this video. Not to mention, we got a new game in 2017 and have an upcoming huge, big-budget AAA title in the works that Nintendo would literally rather scrap two years of work on and hand over to a completely different studio than have it cancelled or released in a subpar state. That's some hardcore dedication right there. Those aren't the actions of a company that's neglecting its series. So just keep supporting the games, Metroid fans. Even if it never sets the world on fire, I doubt very much the Metroid series will ever go defunct. Nintendo's been making games for over 40 years now. So obviously some series and ideas have persisted, lo <laughs> persisted, persisted longer than others. The likes of Donkey Kong, Metroid, Pikmin, and a freaking course Mario Kart are among the lucky few who have lasted well beyond their initial inceptions. Many, 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 many others have unfortunately not. Like I said before, ARMS doesn't count, and hopefully never will. Hashtag save ARMS. But let's visit a very famous example of a neglected Nintendo series that myself and many of my channel supporters often mourn, F-Zero. The last console F-Zero game to be released to this very day is F-Zero GX on the GameCube in 2003. And the last handheld variant was F-Zero Climax on the GBA in 2004. Either way you slice it, just in terms of pure time gone by without a new game, F-Zero is super neglected. From the time it takes for a newborn baby human to be legally allowed to vote in the USA, there hasn't been a new official F-Zero branded anything. Not even t-shirts or something. But that's not all. Shigeru Miyamoto has gone on record multiple times stating that he has no desire or intentions to return to the series. Even going so far as to question why fans would want them in the first place, and even expressing contempt for fans and press who talk about it. I made a whole video going into detail about why F-Zero is missing, as well as how I to do a new one, so I won't drudge up all the details here. Suffice it to say, F-Zero needs a miracle before it gets a new game. The only bits of relevancy it has at all in the modern day are Captain Falcon's continued appearances in Smash Brothers, and recently the F-Zero content in Mario Kart 8. And boy, ain't that a kick in the pants. Another niche Nintendo series that I bring up a lot on this channel, but have yet to make a dedicated video on for some reason, is Custom Robo. Now the last Custom Robo game released was Custom Robo Arena on the DS in 2006. While thinking of the script for this video in my head, I thought to myself, sure, it hasn't been over a decade, but the trademark expired and noise has gone defunct, so it still meets my neglected series criteria. But then I remembered. 2006 was 15 years ago! Gosh, how did I get so old? Chibi Robo, on the other hand, completely different from Custom Robo, has had a game release within the last decade, if you can even call Ziplash a game. But it would seem that Skip LTD, who created and developed all Chibi Robo's outings in the past, are either going or have gone under. Don't give up hope just yet, Chibi Robo fans, but keep an ear to the ground. If ever there was a struggling Nintendo IP that needed support, it be this one. I've also heard, and I'm not sure if it's true, but I have heard, that if Nintendo lets the Chibi Robo trademark expire, the rights would revert to Namco. So even if Chibi Robo dies, it would at least have a more straightforward shot at being revived. What with the whole not existing in an intellectual property limbo thing? Something that has unfortunately killed any semblance of hope I have for a return to custom robo. Ugh. <sighs> the likes of Diddy Kong Racing, Wave Race, 1080, Kirby's Air Ride, and Excite Bike slash Truck slash Bots have also all gone over a decade without new releases. And based on Nintendo's flimsy justification for F-Zero's neglect being that they already have Mario Kart for when they want to make a racing game, it wouldn't surprise me to learn that all of those uniquely distinct series have been unfairly canned for the same reason. The Kid Icarus series has one year from now to go before it's officially been on a 10-year hiatus. Series director Masahiro Sakurai's constant work on the Smash Brothers series being the main reason for this neglect. Would Sakurai like to return to Kid Icarus immediately after Ultimate's DLC is done? I sure hope so, but only time will tell. He's expressed disinterest in doing so around the time he had just finished Uprising and was working on Smash for 3DS and Wii U. But I don't know, maybe spending all this time on Smash Brothers has made him pine for a return to the last franchise he was able to work on before getting stuck in this hype-driven purgatory. I could gab till the cows come home about series Nintendo's left dormant for over a decade. 
Heck, I could probably go on for days if we include other companies like Sony, Sunsoft, EA, Ubisoft, Capcom, Sega. I could even go on and on just naming other companies with neglected IPs. So why do some IPs get neglected while others retain relevance at infinitum? Well, to be frank, some properties have just plain had better reach, marketing, influence, and so on when compared to the others. Very few fantasy video game series could directly rival The Legend of Zelda. It just made all the right strides at just the right time at multiple points in gaming history. No monster-collecting RPG could hope to rival Pokémon, outside of Japan anyway, because it too touched audiences all over the world in just the right way at just the right time. No video game property ever could outperform Mario, period. It's been immortalized not just by its legacy, but by its universal appeal built from pushing the envelope of technical limitations until it was free to take whatever shape it wants, all the while still keeping the focus on finely crafted fun. So even when Nintendo themselves attempt to create an experience worthy of standing peer-to-peer -peer with these absolute juggernauts, they sometimes, if not most of the time, fall short. In fact, it is extremely rare for Nintendo to introduce a new IP post-90s that can do so. It is an absolute miracle that Nintendo was able to create a totally new series that can stand proudly beside their most iconic properties in terms of design, reception, and sales with Splatoon. Even still, while not every ongoing Nintendo property out there has tens of millions of games sold like Mario, Zelda, Splatoon, or Pokémon, series like F-Zero even after 18 years of dormancy, and ARMS even despite only having one game so far, have still sold millions of copies each, and are generally well-reviewed. Regarding Nintendo, its neglected IPs, and even the IPs like Metroid, Mario Kart, and Donkey Kong, which I don't consider neglected but still have a large enough dedicated following to whom seven years feels like an eternity to wait, I think the biggest issue here is a lack of communication from Nintendo to the fans and press, and arguably a lack of effective resource management. I am not, nor do I claim to be, an expert in the field of international electronic entertainment development slash publishing slash management slash distribution, <gasps> but I can't help but feel that Nintendo, the richest company in all of Japan, could stand to, well, do a lot of things, frankly, but staying on topic, hire more staff slash collaborate with more third and second party studios to keep more of their beloved series in circulation, while still creating brand new experiences as they're apt to do. It was super cool of Nintendo to collaborate with an indie studio to create Cadence of Hyrule. It was so neat to see that they allowed Ubisoft to make great use of the world and characters of Star Fox for Battle of Atlas. It was awesome that they allowed Mercury Steam to develop Samus Returns. Even back in the GameCube days, they trusted companies like Sega and Namco with the likes of F-Zero and Star Fox. And a hot take, each of them are the best games in their respective series. Sure, Miyamoto may say things like, We have no idea, so just if I make a new F-Zero game, I don't know why he's Italian. But maybe someone else does. Maybe you should take the risk and trust an outsider to do right by a property you do no favors for by leaving it dormant for so long. I mean, if you ask a 12-year-old kid who grew up with Nintendo systems if they know what Star Fox is, they'd probably say yes. What, with Star Fox 64 3D, Star Fox Zero, and the Star Fox content and Battle for Atlas being around, not to mention some iconography built into the Switch's user icons. But if you ask them what F-Zero is, they'd probably have no idea. They might recognize Captain Falcon from Smash Bros, but how are they supposed to know he comes from a competitive, futuristic arcade racer with a cast of cool comic book looking characters? There hasn't been an F-Zero game fresh off store shelves in 18 years. That hypothetical kid was negative eight the last time we had a new F-Zero release. That kid had yet to exist longer than Mario Kart and Donkey Kong's current hiatuses. Y you see what I mean here? It's just ridiculous to me that a company would all but leave a beloved product of theirs to die just because they have so many more that just sell better and are maybe a little bit too similar. And on top of that, I find it ridiculous that fans of Donkey Kong, Mario Kart, and yes, even the likes of Metroid and Pikmin would have the gall to accuse Nintendo of neglecting those series when the likes of F-Zero, Custom Robo, Golden Sun, Sin and Punishment, etc. have gone over a decade with no new releases and in most cases have circumstances built around them such that they may never get revived. Am I making sense? <laughs> Does my line of logic follow here? I don't mean to say we shouldn't get more frequent sequels to Pikmin and Donkey Kong or whatever, but I guess I would gladly let any of those series go eight or nine or heck even ten years with no new releases if it meant we might see a return to some of those series whose hiatuses are older than their target audience. I guess I've said my piece. I should probably wrap up here. For now, I'll just say, take in and enjoy the creative works that inspire you. Sometimes you never really know how good you've got it before it's gone. Wow. 
Okay, that, no, no, I'm sorry. That was way too somber for a video about discussing old video games. Uh, how about this? Play what you like to play, no matter how many people agree or disagree with you. Yeah, that's better. Whether it's a popular game that's completely taken over the internet, or an obscure game that nobody but you seems to care about, if you find it fun, have fun with it. In fact, why don't you let me know what your favorite games are down in the comments. We can share our fondness for games with one another and not start any flame wars at all. Yay! Thank you for watching. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and check out the description for links to my social media, PayPal, Patreon, and all that jazz. Very special thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting me more than YouTube does. And of course, thank you for watching. I will see you the next time I see you. Bye bye